Hello everyone in year two, lovely to see you again. I'm going to be reading the next part of the Frank Laurent story that I started yesterday. So make sure you catch that video if you haven't done so already. If you remember, Laurence was a very large black cat. Um, we couldn't quite work out why he was so large, but we were hearing about lots and lots of different houses that had a black cat. So I don't know what you're thinking about that. I think I might be thinking, is it the same cat visiting lots of houses? What do you think? Let's find out together. For a long while, Lawrence was not only the fattest, but also the happiest cat you can imagine. Assured of comfortable places to sleep and the certainty of four good square meals a day, he had not a care in the world. He looks very happy. But gradually, as time went on and he grew, would you believe it, even fatter, he began to feel that all this travelling, from Rosevale to Hillview, from Hillview to number 33, from number 33 to the Gables, and then back from the Gables all the way to Rosevale, was too much of a good thing. All that walking, now that his black bulk was so vast, was tiring. In addition, he suffered from indigestion. I don't like one summer evening, while making his way from Woodland Way to Pevensey Place for supper, he stopped at the edge of a small boating lake in the middle of the park. As he bent his head to lap the water, he caught sight of his reflection in the water. Can you see what he's looking at? Lawrence, my boy, he said, you are carrying too much weight. You'd better do something about it. But what? I'll see what the boys say. Now the boys were Lawrence's four particular friends. Each lived near one of his addresses. Opposite Rosevale, on the other side of Forest Street, Fernmount was the home of a ginger tom called Bert, who of course knew the black cat as Lawrence Higgins. Next day after breakfast, Lawrence paid a call on him. Here is Bert. Bert, he said, do you think I'm carrying too much weight? If you carry much more, Higgins, old pal, said Bert, you'll break the bloom you're blooming back. Mrs Higgins must feed you very well. She gives me only one meal a day, Lawrence said. After lunch, he visited the second of the boys, who also lived in Forest Street at Restholm, a couple of doors beyond Hillview. He was a tabby, Tom, named Fred, who of course knew the black cat, as Lawrence Norman. Fred, said Lawrence, tell me straight, Tom to Tom, would you call me fat? Norman, old chum, said Fred, you are as fat as a pig. The Normans must shovel food into you. But they only give me one meal a day, said Lawrence. After tea, he waddled round the corner into Woodland Way where at number 35 there lived a white tom called Percy. He, of course, knew the black cat as Lawrence Mason. Here is Percy. Percy, said Lawrence, give me some advice. Percy, like many white cats, was rather deaf. Give you some of my mice, he said. Not likely, Mason, old mate. You don't need any extra food. Anyone can see that. You eat too much already. Do you think I should go on a diet? asked Lawrence. Do I think you're going to die of it? said Percy. Yes, probably. Old Mason must be stuffing food into you. But he only gives me one meal a day, said Lawrence loudly. Percy heard this. One meal a week, Mason, he said. That's all you need. Later, Lawrence plodded across the park, being careful not to look at his reflection in the boating lake. And in Pevensey Place, he called in at the Cedars, which was opposite the Gables. Here lived the fourth of the boys, a blue Persian Tom by the name of Darius. Here is Darius. Darius was not only extremely handsome, with his small, wide-set ears, and his big, round eyes, and his snub nose, and his long, flowing blue coat. He was also much more intelligent than Bert or Fred or Percy. Here 
this one. It's very beautiful. What's up, Barkley Lloyd, old boy? He said when he saw Lawrence. You're puffing and blowing like a grampus. You're going to have to do something about yourself, you know. The colonel and his wife only feed me once a day, said Lawrence. Oh, I dare say, replied Darius. But look here, Barkley Lloyd, old boy. I wasn't born yesterday, you know. You're getting more than one meal a day, aren't you now? Yes, said Lawrence. How many? Four altogether. He's worked out that he is living in lots of different houses. So at three other houses besides the Gables? Yes, bad show, Barclay Lloyd, said Darius. You'll have to cut down. If you don't, then in my opinion, you're going to eat yourself to death. Just think how much better you'll feel if you lose some of that weight. You won't get so puffed. You'll be leaner and fitter and your girlfriend will find you much more attractive. Well, I haven't got a girlfriend, Darius, said Lawrence sadly. And why is that, Barclay Lloyd, old boy, said Darius. Ask yourself why. Because I'm too fat? Undoubtedly. A figure of fun, would you say? Afraid so. Actually, girls do tend to, gig tend to giggle at me. Not surprised. Lawrence took a deep breath. All right, he said. I'll do it, Darius. I'll go on a diet. Good show, Barclay Lloyd, said Darius. I'll cut down to three meals a day, said Lawrence. One. Two. One, said Darius firmly. One good day, one good meal a day is all any cat needs. For a while, Lawrence sat thinking. Then he said, but if I'm only to have one meal a day, I only need to go to one house. What's wrong with the gables, said Darius. Nothing, said Lawrence. They give me chicken nuggets and gold top milk. What, said Darius. Well, you can cut the milk out for a start. Water for you from now on, old boy. But if I just stay here, said Lawrence, the other people will be worried. They'll wonder where I've got to. Mrs Higgins and the Normans and old Mr Mason. And I shan't see the other boys, Fred and Bert and Percy. For a little while, Darius sat thinking. Then he said, There are two ways to play this, Barclay Lloyd. One is, you continue to make the rounds of your houses, but in each you only eat a quarter of what they cooked before you. Then that'll add up to one meal a day. Are you strong-minded enough to leave three quarters of a bowlful at each meal? No, said Lawrence. Then, said Darius, the only thing to do is for you to spend the whole day at each house in turn. And if you take my advice, you'll cut out breakfast, lunch and, and tea. Stick to supper. Which reminds me, it's time for mine. Cheerio, Barclay Lloyd, old boy, and the best of luck with your diet. To the surprise of the Colonel and his wife, that Sunday evening, Lawrence didn't touch his milk. He ate the chicken, certainly, greedily, in fact, as though it was his last meal for some time and he went to sleep on the foot of the four-poster bed, as usual. But the next morning, no mewing roused the Barclay Lloyds, and when they did wake, it was to find Lawrence still with them, and apparently in no hurry to move. On Monday, breakfast time came, and went with no sign of Lawrence Higgins at Rosevale. Lunchtime at Hillview passed without Lawrence Norman. At number 33, Lawrence Mason did not appear for tea. Old Mr Mason was worried about his black cat, as were the Normans. So was Mrs Higgins, but her worry ceased as Lawrence popped in through the cat flap at Rosevale that evening. Lawrence Higgins, she cried, where have you been? You must be starving. Lawrence would have agreed could he have understood her words, and he polished off the bowl of cat meat that was put before him and hoisted his black bulk into the oh. Sorry about that. It's rebalancing my camera. And 
to Mrs Higgins Supplies, spent the night there. On Tuesday evening, Lawrence Norman appeared for supper at Hillview. On Wednesday evening, Lawrence Mason ate at number 33. Not until the Thursday evening did Lawrence Barclay Lloyd appear for supper at the Gables, much to the relief of the Colonel and his wife, who of course had not set eyes on their black cat since Monday. Gradually, everyone grew used to this strange new state of affairs and their black cat now only turned up every four days. And gradually, as the weeks passed, Lawrence grew thinner. The boys noticed this, though only one of them knew why. You can remember, that's Barclay Lloyd's. Um, that's the Gables cat, isn't it? He knew. You on a diet, Higgins, old pal? asked Bert. Sort of, said Lawrence. You're looking a lot fitter, Norman. Old chum, said Fred. I feel it, said Lawrence. To Percy he said, I've lost some weight. What's that, Mason, old mate, said Percy. I've lost some weight. Lost your plate, said Percy. No, wait. Eh? Wait, shouted Lawrence. Why should I, said Percy. What am I meant to be waiting for? As for Darius, he was delighted that his plan for his friend was working so well. There's Lawrence trying to talk to Percy, who's a little bit deaf and can't hear very well. After months of dieting, Lawrence was positively thin. Here he is. And what he looked like on the front. He stopped eating all those meals. Jolly good show, Barclay Lloyd, old boy, purred the Persian cat. The girls will never be able to resist you. I don't know any. Well, between you and me and the gatepost, said Darius, there's a little cracker living down at the other end of Pevensey Place. Tortoiseshell and white she is. Dream of a figure. Amazing orange eyes. You'd make a grand pair. So next morning, Lawrence woke the Barclay Lloyds early, left the gables and made his way down Pevensey Place. I don't expect I shall like her, he thought. Darius was probably exaggerating. So when he caught sight of her lying in the sunshine on the front lawn, his heart leapt within him so much leapt, leapt, sorry, leapt within his so much less bulky body. And there she is, the beautiful cat again. She's watching him. He's leaving. To my cat. Hello, he said in a voice made gruff with embarrassment. Hello, she replied in a voice like honey and she opened wide her amazing orange eyes. I haven't seen you around before, she said. What's your name? Lawrence, muttered Lawrence. There, she's a very pretty cat. I'm Bella, she said. Bella, thought Lawrence. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful cat. It's love at first sight. It's now or never. Bella, he said. Could we be uh, friends? Bella stood up and stretched her elegant tortoiseshell and white body. Friends? Yes, I dare say, she replied, but nothing more. Oh, said Lawrence, you don't like me? Frankly, Lawrence, no, said Bella. I like the sound of you. You're nice, I'm sure, but you're much too slender for my taste. I've never cared for slim boys. I go for the really well-covered types. As a matter of fact, there's a black cat further up Pevensey Place. I haven't seen him around lately, but I really had a crush on him. Talk about fat, he was enormous. I do love a very, very fat cat, and he was the fattest. She sighed. If only I could meet him again one day, she said. Who do you think she's talking about? You will, thought Lawrence, you will and before very long too. And he padded away across the park to be in time for breakfast at Rosevale, followed by lunch at Hillview, tea at number 33, and then back for supper at the Gables, including a saucer of gold top, and perhaps if he could persuade the Barclay Lloyds, second helpings. Oh, Bella, he thought as he hurried along, just you wait. 
And there he is. And Bella likes her cat a little, cats a little bit fatter. He's decided he's going to give up his diet and eat a bit more. Well, I hope you enjoyed that story. I'm going to be posting a few more different stories on here as time goes by, so look out for them. Also, uh, next week, look out for Mrs. Bratelli and I giving you um, a little bit of um, teaching for different subjects of maths and English, so keep looking on the channel. All right, take care, keep well, enjoy the good weather, get some fresh air. Bye.